Um, say hello to everybody that is here. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you joining for this Meet the Pros. Uh, we're going to do three of these this week. One today for Rocket League. We have one on Wednesday for Overwatch. And then we're ending the week on Friday with our Fortnite Meet the Pros. So um, it's a great opportunity to not only talk to someone and, and hear from someone who is an expert in video games, but it's also a chance for you to get to know your coaches because all the pros that you'll be meeting uh, in this week are going Going to be coaches in the upcoming Epic Pathway Esports League. Um, and we're very excited for you to meet them and, and, and learn from them. Um, so today I'll share my screen. Today you will be meeting, and I'll share my sound here. Um, you'll be meeting Xander or Nitrous, uh, who will be talking about Rocket League. So Let's, uh, let's get started. And for those of you who might not know Rocket League, we have a little uh, Rocket League compilation clip here. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Oh my goodness, greasy. Uh oh, he's gonna have himself time and he's got himself boost, gonna try and carry this the entire length of the pitch and he does. And easily able to react. Garrett, over the top of one. Pass two. He's got Justin in support. Takes it by himself. Hooks his attempted shot. Back into the middle. Sad Junior. Nice flick. Looks for Jacob. Jacob. No way. Oh, oh my God. God. So they're going into the lower bracket. Oh, oh can that be it? Cuts. Timmy. We'll stop it off. Two. One. The shot. No, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Pass will be up quick. He done off the backboard. A second touch from Coach. Oh, my God. Now Drippe is an option. They're going to try and find him. Oh, they're going to be open. That's there. Comes Drippe. Armin wraps it around. Gerji moves up. Screen plays. Oh, yeah! It's a demolition! It's a free game! With this next one in, it's just so close for them. They have a control. Oh, turbo! turbo! The whole team doesn't matter. Does it himself. He's got the steals. The mid-risk is one that's going to slow down. He's taking this one now on the defensive. Still zero go. He makes the touch. Oh, what? No, no way. What are you kidding me? Look at this pitch from Cookster. This was the scoreline in game three. Wild nine. Unable to take it, but squishy now. Oh, 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 Daily oh, 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 oh. it through. He's been going for this stuff all season. Nobody can actually was taking the bait. Devo up high. That is going to drop down fire, but a bump going to be there. So here are some, some highlights of Rocket League and sort of what the gameplay is. Um, Xander or Nitrous, if you could really quickly sort of explain what, what Rocket League is, the, the game itself. So Rocket League is very simple. It's car soccer. You score the ball in the net. You know, uh, that, that's um, there's, there's a lot of intricacies to it, but the main thing is get the ball in the net, you know, and keep it out of yours. So uh, that's one thing I really like about Rocket League is how easy it is for new players to kind of pick up the, um, not necessarily the mechanics, just the, the basis of the game. And it's also so easy to watch at a high level too, because it's, it's just one of those games that it's really easy to watch. And a yeah. lot of this pro level is, this is, this isn't recent pro level um, clips, but this is, this is basically like what it is in on like LAN and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. Um, and that's something that I, I really like about Rocket League as well is um, it sort of has a low barrier of entry to understanding the game itself. Right. Um, if you look at something like Overwatch, you know, there are objectives, there are different parts of the game. There's a lot of things to understand. Um, and there are intricacies within Rocket League, um, but understanding like the basic goals, that's something that I, I really like as well. So I'll go hey, back. Nitrous, I, I have a quick question. So uh, how come you think like, like how did Rocket League become so popular? You know, I mean, it's like, it's a simple game. It's fun. It's you explained it really well. You know, it's soccer with cars type of thing, but like, it's a global phenomenon. You well, like, you know what the secret sauce is? 
Well, I honestly think that the the main reason that Rocket League is as big as it is and it's just going to keep getting bigger is because it's not like any other games. Uh, you're going to see a lot. It's just there's there's no games like it. You have racing games where you're racing against other people that has cars in it. But you don't really see many other many games where you you take a car and you have your own physics based kind of uh, gameplay. And I think that's what makes this game a lot more popular than others and a lot easier to kind of get the get it down, I guess. All right, cool. All right, Richie. Awesome. Yeah. So let's uh, let's take it away. We'll get started here with the the first question that we have here uh for nitrous which is what's your what's your peak sr uh yeah in rocket league uh we go by mmr uh matchmaking okay. rating yeah um so i think right there on the left uh was pretty close to my peak mmr uh i got 2352 um which was around the same levels as squishy and a bunch of other people um like garrett g and stuff uh that 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 uh ranked uh season was kind of inflated but um yeah uh, the next season after that, uh, I got top 10, um, and that was around like 2158. Um, but yeah, I, I've been, when I've, when I've played ranked, um, when, when you get to the higher level ranked, isn't as, as, isn't as helpful, um, uh, when you have scrims and stuff, when you play with the team. Um, so I've kind of stopped playing ranked necessarily, but I think, yeah, we, um, I, I've been, I played ranked a lot that season. But one of the most important things in Rocket League is just putting in as much time as you can because it's not like any other games. Yeah, um, uh, good point that you make. It's building the muscle memories for different mechanics and stuff, right? Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not the same thing where you can go into a shooter game and uh, kind of keep your same aim. Um, whereas like Rocket League, there's completely different mechanics and learning that mu muscle memory and the game sense is really important. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Um, all right. The next question we have here is who's the highest profile gamer that you faced uh, and how did you do? Yeah. So there's a, uh, there's different profiles in Rocket League. Obviously you have content creators like um, Rizzo and uh, Musty and people like those. I've played against them multiple times and we trade all the time. Um, I've also played Justin and Squishy. I've played first killer uh, in tournaments before. But those guys are those guys are really really good. And actually, I I made RLCS um, last night actually, um, and so I'll be playing uh, G two. I th I think it might be G two on um, next Friday. So yeah, yeah. I think uh, we have a question on that later on. We'll probably mm -hmm, ask more mm -hmm. more about that in a bit. Um, what where did you face some of these players? Was it just like online ladder? Did you play them in any tournaments? Something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes I play them in ranked. Uh, I played squishy earlier this morning, actually. Um, uh, but yeah, I played, I played first killer. I played the, uh, it was kind of like the Rocket League Olympics, I guess. It was called the International World Open. And I played people like AJ and Rettles and, and um, I think it was first killer Garrett G and Torment or something or Chicago. I don't, I don't remember, but yeah, I played them in a competitive setting. Hey um, Nitrous, do you get like super psyched up when you're gonna like face the the best of the best like this? Well, yeah, I mean, there's so much improvement that comes from playing those really good teams. Um, but when it comes down to it, those people have so much uh, so much more experience than I do. Um, when it comes down to Rocket League, because they've been playing right from the beginning, and they they they've been at the top for so long. Um, so it's really hard. It's a lot of fun. Like it's really like it's a really good feeling when you, when you play those top level people. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, I do get psyched up. It's really, it's really fun to play those kind of fast paced games. Nice. Do you approach it any differently if you're playing someone that's more well-known? Uh, I mean, there's always that sense where like, okay, these guys are better than me. So I have to kind of like play up to their standards, I guess. Uh, that's, that's one thing that's always sometimes in the back of people's mind, but I think the main important thing is to, uh, I don't know, Rocket League is a game all about adapting to your opponents and what they're doing. And it's not just kind of like formulaic, uh, you have to, there's a lot that comes down to it. Um, but yeah. That's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. Awesome. So our next question here is what makes for an elite player in Rocket League? 
Um, what are some elements that go into any pro player? Well, being being the best in Rocket League, it it it's really hard to achieve just because you need to have the amount of hours. Um, the amount of hours like that it, around pros are right now are anywhere from like eight thousand to ten thousand uh, and above ten thousand. Um, so since Rocket League is so different from other games, having those that kind of you have to have a lot of time in it to be um to be playing at that that level um but mentality is another main thing um if you have the confidence you can do anything i think that's one thing that i want to really strive for in this upcoming uh coaching season is to try to inspire confidence in my uh in my cohort and making them all feel like they they are the best you know the best they can be the best person they can be um, but yeah, I think also giving a hundred percent in everything you do will let you help you succeed a lot further in life. You know, nitrous, that, that's one of the things that I really like about you uh, working with us and saying that is because mental strength is a life skill, not just a rocket league skill. You're right. going to you know, do well in school. You're going to have good relationships with um, friends, family, romantic partners. You know, if you're going to life is going to throw you curveballs, and, and it's about how you respond to it. So the idea of you sort of bringing that out, I, I think it's a really important point. And it, it's something that um, speaks to the benefits of why we try to focus so much on the mental game in our Pathway Esports program. Right. And I, by all means, I'm not saying that I'm even close to that level of maturity and mentality, because when you get to that, that's, uh, I mean, that's just, it's all about growing up. I'm only 19 right now, and I'm still, I'm still in the stage of developing my, uh, my mentality and my maturity and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all just a process. It's a lifelong pursuit. It's called yep. wisdom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it doesn't matter where you start, just if you're on the journey and you keep taking, you know, as you said, one day at a time, one foot in front of the other, uh, good things happen. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and nitrous, you mentioned that, you know, pro players put a lot of hours into the game. Do you have any like tips or tricks to avoid burnout? Um, or, or to keep your mentality? Well, I mean, in just like in any game, you have to have fun, you know? Uh, there's, there's a fine line between having fun and, and, um, and like hard sweating everything all the time. Um, but I think it's really important for um, people to kind of, I don't know, it, having, having that kind of, uh, I, I, I don't know the right word for it, um, but, it's just really important. Yeah, keeping things light, right? Not yeah. Taking things too personally. Mm -hmm. Nice. And somebody okay. in the chat um, just, uh, you know, they said balance, right? And I think it's, you know, having sort of uh, that super dedication as well as do you um, do you like cultivate sort of a sense of balance or um is that part of your approach right there is giving yourself kind of not only the uptime but but the downtime and things like that as well yeah i mean one thing that has really helped me like kind of set rocket league apart is that i play other games too like i don't just i don't just play rocket league all the time uh i play other games like i've played sea of thieves before i've played many other games i just recently downloaded far cry 6 which is it's you always need that break right uh, I, I normally put in around like a hundred hours past two. Um, so that, that means, uh, that's how they uh, measure time spent in a game on, uh, on steam as every two weeks, they, it tells you how many hours you've spent in the game. And I'm on around like a hundred, uh, hours, like every two weeks. Um, and I don't know, having, having that break, being able to kind of step back from rocket league, like if you're not feeling it is really important because, Rocket League is a really kind of confidence, kind of mental, mental based game. Um, and having that break is really important. Yeah, I, I think you put it really well there. Um, it also sort of clears your mind when you play a different game for when you come back. Sometimes you feel more refreshed, approach things a little differently. So right, um, right. I think that's awesome. Um, cool. So let's move on to our next question here, which is, I think you mentioned earlier a little bit, but when did you start playing 
Rocket League? Uh, I think it was around 2017. Uh, I actually traded. I was a trader. I, I liked uh, p- uh, pulling crates. I don't know if any of you guys remember when crates were a thing in Rocket League, um, but you were able to um, to uh, pull for crates, and then they got rid of that once Epic Games um, bought them out. Uh, but that's what I did in 2017, and then 2019, I started playing the game uh, prof- I, competitively, I guess is the right way to put it. Um, and there's this thing, once you get into higher levels of Rocket League, I mean, you don't even need it in higher levels, uh, sorry, higher levels in Rocket League. It's called Six Mans. Uh, it's a Discord server uh, where you kind of, it's like kind of a league, I guess. Not necessarily like a league, but you, um, that's that's where most high level players find improvement. Um, and so I, I started playing that and I kept improving and now I'm now I'm where I am, I guess. Nice. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and have you played in any professional leagues? Yeah. So just this last weekend, I was playing in RLCS, uh, which is the the main the main uh, tournament for Rocket League. It's they have it yearly. Uh, I think it's RLCS 11 now. Um, but yeah, I kind of we we played really well. We got top 16. Uh, we have another event on Friday. But yeah, per, I don't know. I've I've played in a few professional leagues. Uh, I played last year as well, uh, last season on RLCSX. Um, and I also played throughout a lot of uh, tournaments such as DreamHack uh, in the summer. And I placed top six in that, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, I have played in a lot of professional leagues. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Congratulations, by the way, um, on qualifying for RLCS. That's awesome. Um, the match that happened yesterday, um, were there any big takeaways, any highlights, anything like that? Um, I mean, there, we, I think we went three and one, uh, it's Swiss bracket. If you, I don't know if you know what that means. Um, but it's kind of like a round Robin, you play the teams that have the same record as you. And we beat a lot of really good teams. Uh, United, you guys might know. Um, I also beat uh, Accelerate, which was Zookeepers a while back. Um, but yeah, the, they've they've all been pretty high level teams, and it's really good to see us competing now against higher level teams. We're gonna be playing NRG, Space Station, all of those really high level teams next uh, next weekend. That's awesome. Good luck on that. Um, Thank you. Do you want to do you want to plug the team that you're on? Uh, yeah, I'm on Team DVS right now. Um, uh, we we're kind of like a smaller org. Um, the Twitter's team D DV, team DVS official. I can write it in chat. Um, if you guys are interested in uh, uh, seeing us play on in the weekend, on the weekend. Um, but yeah, uh, that's my team. Um, we're all really stoked for Friday. That's awesome. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Cool. So, uh, have you made any money from esports in your Rocket League career? Tell us about the money, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So right now I'm on an organization, and we do get monthly pay. Uh, that's kind of how Rocket League pays their, um, or how the players make a lot of their money uh, is through organizations and sponsors and stuff like that. Uh, I've made a little bit of money off of Twitch. Uh, streaming is always good for growing your community and stuff like that. Uh, and I, you obviously also win stuff for, uh, for tournaments. Uh, I won a five grand tournament, um, USO, I think, uh, like two months ago, I think. And then we won another $2,000 tournament, uh, a month ago. Um, so, and then there's also weeklies that are like little cash prizes, I guess, like up to $300. Uh, and you obviously split it with your teammates, three teammates. Um, but yeah, they, uh, Rocket League has done a really good job, like, like, putting out a lot of uh a lot of tournaments and stuff for uh for the players and the bubble players that's great we're gonna have a tournament for the epic family that's gonna it, it, you know at the end of the year right here and um uh prizes are still yet to be determined but i'm sure that you know last year's winners were really happy and i think we'll just up it this year yeah i'm looking forward to it i want to see some competitiveness for my students i, I really like to see that I have a feeling you will. I have a feeling you will. <laughs> awesome. Um, and besides um, just like straight 
monetary from winning the tournaments. Um, have you gotten any scholarships for Rocket League? And sort of how does that work? How did that happen? Yeah, so I'm actually on scholarship right now. I go to Ottawa, Ottawa University. Um, I got a pretty generous scholarship to play Rocket League here. Um, and basically, I, I, uh, I kind of reached out to a bunch of people. Um, Twitter right now, recent, I, I feel like Twitter is the best way to, um, to kind of reach out to people. And if you're at a higher level, uh, DMing them on Twitter and stuff like that will give you, they'll notice you, of course. Um, but yeah, this specific program, Stay Plugged In, uh, I, I reached out to them. Uh, actually, I reached out to one of my friends who knew someone at Stay Plugged In, uh, and they got me into their system and everything. And not even within a day or so, I was getting college offers for scholarships and stuff. Uh, so once you're at that higher level, once you're, I mean, you don't even have to be at that higher level. If you want to play Rocket League, it's, you're always, a, uh, I strongly suggest to try to go and talk to other people and try to get, make friends and look for opportunities because it could be life-changing in the future. It's amazing. That's great advice. Great advice. And, you know, over the course of the year, we hope to avail all um, all our players with just like hookups on whether it's college or opportunities. Or that's what that's what the whole thing is about right here. Yep. Yeah, uh, I think it's awesome that you're able to go to school and get a scholarship for something that you love. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what you're sort of majoring in or have you decided that? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm going to go into psychology, uh, some sort of, uh, I'm not sure if I want to go into the scientific aspect of it or like the medicinal kind of usage of psychology or the, um, the practical use. I'm, I'm not, I'm still trying to figure it out, but yeah. I've always, I've always been interested in how the mind works and how people are the way they are, I guess. Uh, and I want to go further into that. Yeah, that's awesome for sure. Um, cool. So what are some of the most important aspects of team-based Rocket League? Speaking of sort of how the mind works, um, how does it work in a team-based setting? Uh, well, uh, right now I'm teamed with two of my best friends. Uh, and having that is really, really important uh, because having good team morale and chemistry and everything is really, really important in success. Uh, and so I hype them up all the time. I always tell them that they're the best, they're the greatest. Uh, and that's what I want to see a lot of in my cohort, especially is seeing that kind of support um, from everyone, uh, hyping up even people who aren't your teammates. Uh, that's really important um, with team based because you never know when those other people can end up being your teammates in the future. Um, what else? I feel like. Uh, hmm. Communication is really important. Um, communication is ridiculously important um, in Rocket League. And we'll talk about that later. There's a few questions on that. Um, but I just think having a good team morale and kind of setting where, where everyone is equal and everyone wants to succeed, succeed just as much as everyone else is really important in team, uh, in the, in Rocket League teams, I guess. <laughs> That's great. And I love that. I love the positive energy that's just been your consistent focus here. So that, that's really good because um, we want everybody to, you know, to benefit from it, have a good time and enjoy, laugh, right? Good communication, be supportive, things like that. This is not going to, you know, descend into toxicity. Authenticity and, and trolling and all that stuff. Like it's just, you know, like play at a higher level. Right. I love right. that man. Yeah, and actually speaking of, um, I guess, communication or, or life skills, I think Alan mentioned it earlier that a lot of what you've been talking about goes beyond just the game, right? These are valuable lessons and skills that are applicable to the students throughout their entire lives. Um, so what life lessons or skills have you learned from, from gaming or from Rocket League? Right, well, from being a uh, kind of, starting to be in the limelight, I guess, kind of being in the popularity kind of scene. Um, I think it's really important to, uh, one, keep your ego in check. Uh, that's really important um, because I feel like that's probably the 
the struggle that gamers have the most uh, is struggling with, okay, once you're the best or at that level, like you have, you still have to humble yourself. Um, I also think that keeping your friends close is a really good, um, is really, really good because you never know when your friends can help you out. And I really, really stress the importance of friendship and being friendly with others um, because you never know when they can help you out in the future. Um, let's see. Self-control is really important. Um, just being, being able to one, stop yourself from maybe being toxic or anything like that, but also even stop yourself from playing the game. Sometimes you need to have those breaks, like we were talking about earlier, and you need to focus on the stuff that really matters, which is also school too. Um, because down the line, school is going to be really, really important. And yeah, um, all of those uh, I've, I've been trying to improve myself with that as well. Uh, a lot of those things that I'm teaching or are, are going to be teaching is also kind of a, kind of helping me learn to be more mature and mature at a, at a good rate. Well, they, they do say to teach something is to learn a new so there is a, a side of it that you know um good teachers are always learning as they go and it's clear that whoever um you know you're coaching this year they're they have a great time with you that's no doubt mm -hmm. i'm really looking forward to it awesome uh and speaking of communication um how important is it in rocket league and what are some of the most common things that you are uh communicating with your teammates about uh so i, I said this before communication is really really important uh communicating uh what you're doing uh what you're planning on doing which is also important uh how much boost you have uh how much uh boost the opponent might have uh, your positioning on the field is really important because that, that lets your teammates know where you are. Um, and also the positioning of opponents. If you're getting challenged really quickly or your, your opponents are far and you have space to do more with the ball. Um, but the whole, the whole point of, of communication is, is telling, giving information, right? It shouldn't be like long. It should be quick bursts of information that help your teammates and put them in a better position that you can be in, uh, that they can be in so that you can just succeed together. Calming's not only about yourself, it's about your teammates. That's, that's what I'm going to stress as well in my cohort. Nice. And you mentioned earlier that you have to be really flexible when you're playing the game. Uh, I'm wondering how, how much of what you do is sort of planned beforehand? Like, do you work out with your teammates specific plays or do you try and just let everything happen really naturally? Right, so Rocket League is not necessarily, you can't really, you can't really prepare for uh, specific plays. That's, it's not like football where you have, you have to coordinate different plays and people have exact positions to be. Uh, you play positions around the ball and kind of, uh, once you, once you have the, um, the kind of game knowledge to know like what ball is yours and what isn't, uh, that's really, that's kind of a big part. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. And, uh, what exciting career opportunities are available in the world of esports that you've seen so far? Uh, so there's always graphic design. Uh, I have a few friends who are into that, um, but graphic design would normally help anywhere from psionics for their, uh, for their kind of videos or whatever kind of stuff they're showing off. Uh, there's also management, uh, teams like so my team, for example, I have a, I have a manager and manager's job is to get scrims, uh, schedule tournaments, all that stuff. Uh, and they, they do a lot and that, that's really helpful. Uh, you can always be a player uh if you are at that level or if you even want to be at that level that's always possible uh there's coaching um helping other people once you kind of understand the game to a point where you can teach other people on how to play it uh is one option and then there's also content creation where you could either be a streamer or do youtube or anything like that uh if you if you kind of want to 
and enjo- like make people enjoy your content and stuff. Now, there's a lot of charisma that comes with that too. And, you know, um, one of the things is that we have uh, courses available for those who are interested um, in, you know, in basically, um, you know, the beginnings of game design and game development. So those are offered for anybody who's involved in the Epic world. Um, We've got a game dev course. We also have a web dev course and things like that. So if you're, you know, if that's your itch, um, you know, look around and I think it, in the learning fund, it can be scratched um, quite reasonably. Our courses are great. Our courses there are great. Richie, you're like a lead author on those courses. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say if you learn how to use Unity, um, a game like Rocket League, which is sort of basic in mechanics, you can create in Unity. I, I believe that every student here can learn Unity and try and recreate Rocket League um, in the program, right? That's a, that's a fun challenge. Challenge yourself to um, recreate the mechanics that you, that you see here um, and maybe even try making Rocket League 2, right? Adding some mechanics, um, seeing ways that you can uh, develop and, and design things um, that add to the game. That's that's a fun aspect of creating games is, is always learning and building and testing and making new versions, iterating, all that fun stuff. So, um, yeah, if you love Rocket League and you want to learn how to code, that's my challenge to you. Try and try and recreate the game. <laughs> learn how to learn Unity. That's great. That's great. Awesome. Um, And those are all of the planned questions we had. Um, So at this point, we're going to open it up to the Q&A and chat. If anybody has some questions for Nitrous, we already have uh, some in here. So um, I'll I'll start with the first one here for you, Nitrous, is uh, what are some, I'm assuming, mechanics that you would recommend for a plat two to learn? So what might what might be the focus for someone who's in plat? Um, is it mechanics? Is it communication? Is it teamwork? Anything like that? Uh, when you're plat two or even around that level, you just gotta like, keep playing the game more. Uh, I don't think, I don't think focusing. Obviously, those cool flip resets, they're they're great, they're awesome. Uh, but a lot of those, t- a lot of the time, people don't really, uh, kind of, uh, it's it's more like they're not putting the effort into the game if they want to improve they're just kind of playing it for fun um but if you want to get to that actual level where you actually see improvement uh it's all about playing the game and trying to improve like set goals for yourself like in game if you want to demo more or something like that like that's always that's always important um nitrous how how important would you say reflection is like analysis of your own gameplay i think that's sort of an element of not doing it casually right reflecting on it and thinking about how you think well i mean i do it every single day after my scrims and after games and everything it's all about okay what can i do better right you know because even at the pro level it's not it's not just you're at the top you know there's there's always better there's always better teams to play even when you're at the bet at the top there's still more to work on so and improve and so all of that kind of an analysis and kind of self-reflection is really, really important. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, Mm -hmm. The next question here is from uh, an anonymous, and and I actually, I think I can answer this one. Um, It's when does the league start? um, And are there players that are supersonic legend in the program? Um, Our program starts October 18th, so next Monday. Once again, if you are enrolled in the program, make sure you check your student email for a welcome package that has a welcome survey for you to complete. And it also has the link to uh, the webinar that's happening next week on Monday. Um, So yeah, keep an eye out for that. In terms of who is already enrolled, we do have some some high ranking players in the upcoming season. I'm very excited to see them playing um, and and all that good stuff. And we also have some new players. So I'm also excited for those new players to work with the higher players and Nitrous and our coaches um, to begin growing their skills. So yes, once again, program starts next Monday, October 18th please check your email for your welcome packages. 
Okay, cool. Uh, and the next question is, uh, Nitrous, I am 1900 in threes. What are the main things to focus on uh, to reach 2K MMR? Uh, well, I mean, just like I was talking about before, it's got to be that self-reflection and the, the, the analysis. Um, when you're at that level, your mechanics are probably good enough to, um, to be speedy and kind of, uh, uh, kind of beat people to the ball and, and shine against, uh, lower ranked players. Um, but it's all about getting to that next step, um, and kind of, seeing what you can even you can you're doing stuff right obviously but there's a lot that you could do better so i would recommend getting a coach and you you'll have one um you'll have a really good one probably because you are ssl um and the highest rank in the game um but if you i feel like you should definitely focus on kind of how start developing your play style as well and kind of getting to a level where you can play your game and then improve on it. Nice, thank you. Um, cool, so the next question is uh, from Marshall. Nitrous, what do you think is the hardest mechanic in your opinion to learn and to master? Uh, I think that would be different for everyone. Um, some people have a hard time flip resetting, some people have even have a hard time wave dashing. Um, it's, it, it really depends on what you work on uh, i feel probably like double flip resets would probably be the hardest mechanic um to learn and master just because of all the prerequisites you kind of need to have in order to do it uh because you, you need to be able to flip reset first you need to be able to uh just use your flip correctly and in different ways and stuff um but yeah cool awesome Okay. And the next one, I think we talked about it. Um, but what was your highest rank that you've reached? Uh, I reached SSL. I, I was at 2300 MMR. Nice. Awesome. And you were on the global leaderboards, right? Yep. Awesome. And then a uh, question from Kelly, what rank were you when you got your scholarship? You, you That's a good question. Uh, I was SSL. Uh, I re I got it. Um, I think I think it was six months ago, I guess. Um, but I was still, I was, I was still SSL. Yeah. Uh, I think I reached SSL or I guess grand champ, uh, back when grand champ was the highest rank in the game. Um, I, uh, I got, I got grand champ in season 12, I think. And then, and then I got SSL like right when it came out, basically. Very cool. Uh, we have a question from Michael here, who is amazed that you're a pro at 19 and, and playing at the highest levels. Um, do you have any recommendations for someone who wants to go pro um, at any game at a very young age? Uh, well, a lot of my friends actually are, are 13, 14 year olds, and they're really, really, really good at the, uh, at the game. Uh, they play they play all the time. Like one of them, I, I'm not sure if you guys know, he's been on Johnny Boy's stream a few times. Uh, his name's Drolly. Um, I have another friend whose name's Aqua. Uh, they're, they're both, thir I think Drolly's 13 or 14 and Aqua's 14. Um, but the reason that they're so good at the game is because they put a ridiculous amount of time into the game and, and learning mechanics and stuff like that. And they are all really good. Another example, uh, Daniel. I, I'm sure if you've played Rocket League, you've kind of heard about him before because he's really hyped up by all the pros and stuff. Um, but he is he he's gonna turn 15 soon. He's gonna be in the uh I think it's December he turns 15. Um, but yeah, he he's one of the best players in the world, only at a young age. And the reason is is because he put in the time and effort uh to play ranked and to getting to that higher level, and he pushed himself just like everyone else did at that young age and uh i feel like everyone who puts in that grind and kind of puts their head down and just works on themselves and getting better they it's so easy to get good in any game as long awesome. as you have the time and the drive yeah and you do it in correct ways right productive right. and healthy ways right. not just playing casually or um not really think of thinking about it call it autopilot you can't be playing an autopilot you always right, have to be right. reflecting 
setting goals for yourself and trying to improve. Um, and that, that actually kind of goes into the next question here from James, which is where did you learn to play or how did you learn to play? Uh, so my first friend, actually, I, uh, this is actually right when I ch- kind of changed my name to Nitrous uh, back on Xbox. My name was Gooey or Llama 7018, I think. <laughs> um, and I, I joined a freestyling team, I guess. Uh, and I played with someone who was champ one. And at that time I was only like diamond three and I was like, oh my God, he's champ. Um, and we started playing together. Uh, and then I ended up taking a break and then I came back and we played again and we played a lot more. And I met another friend who at the time was GC and I was only like champ two. And I feel like one thing definitely is really important in learning how to play is playing against people that are better than you. And playing with them too, playing against them and with them is really, really cool because not only do you improve by playing with them and kind of seeing the sense of having them on your team, but also what you can expect when you're going against those people who are better than you. That's an amazing point that you just made as well. Um, As I mentioned earlier, we have lots of students joining the program who are, you know, brand new to the game, you know, they're unranked. And they shouldn't be intimidated to play with other students who are maybe better or higher ranked um, because, again, as, as Nitrous just said, it's an opportunity for you to learn from them. And that's one of the best ways to, to get better. So that, mm-hmm. that's a great point, Nitrous. Um, Riley wonders if you prefer playing on PC or Xbox. Uh, uh, so I started on, that, on Xbox. Uh, I was definitely I like I started out on Xbox. Um, But once you get to PC and you're able to modify your PC and use a 240 hertz monitor, uh, you'll you'll see massive, massive improvement uh, throughout uh, everything, honestly. Uh, Just having that kind of smoother gameplay and everything is 10 times better than on Xbox. Uh, Even the new Xbox, too. PCs are just... If, if you can, if you can get a PC and you're very serious about gaming, uh, I, I would definitely recommend it. It is a big, big expense, um, for younger people, um, obviously, but, uh, if you could, you know, just like work for one summer and get, get a PC, I would highly recommend it because it is life-changing and it will seriously improve your skill. Especially if you build your own PC as well, um, because then you can continue to upgrade it, update it, um, and just, you know, have it forever, right? So it's a, t- right. it's a tool that you can have forever. Um, and actually, one of our lessons in Pathway Esports is about building your own computer. So if you're interested in that and you're enrolled, stay tuned. That's one of the lessons. Um, and Nitrous, I've heard that people generally playing Rocket League prefer game pads. Is that correct over keyboard and mouse? Uh, yeah, I use um I use my place I use PlayStation Five. Um, I personally like the PlayStation Five controller. Um, but yeah, I would I would definitely recommend if you're starting out. Uh, I would seriously recommend using a controller because the mechanics and learning them quick you can learn them ten times quicker than you can on uh mouse and keyboard i because i started on xbox and so there was no opportunity for me to play on keyboard and mouse um and i don't know it just for me personally it feels kind of clunky and weird and i don't get that smooth same feeling that i do uh with the joysticks and stuff uh so i would definitely recommend using controller if you were getting into rocket league nice good good insight there becky wonders what it's like playing in rlcs um geez i i think (laughs) i don't know it's it's an experience especially for a lot of the time i end up playing my friends in rlcs and that's that's what stinks is when you you know it you have to beat them just because it's so important um i think that's the worst part about rlcs but otherwise that that feeling of winning (laughs) holy crap it's the best thing in the world um I uh, there's nothing like the feeling of winning um but one thing that my coach I have a coach too um for my team um but one thing that he's always told me is you either win or you learn you never lose because you can always learn from the mistakes that you have and you can advance it and make it a lot better for yourself yeah 
that's a that's a good one. It's a great one. I love that as well. Um, cool. Crystal's wondering how do you do those insane aerial goals? I'm guessing that comes down to a lot of practice. <laughs> yeah, it's just practice and muscle memory. That's basically it. Nice. Um, Scott's wondering if you need to be ranked. Um, if you're talking about to participate in the upcoming league, the answer is no. You don't need to be ranked. Um, by the time you come out of the league and you end the season, chances are you go play ranked. You'll get a pretty good rank, though. So um, keep with it. Keep practicing. Um, feel free to join, even if it's your first time playing Rocket League. Um, it's a great place to learn. What would you recommend for someone in plat with 50 hours? Keep um, playing the game. Keep playing. <laughs> just, keep practicing. Just keep playing, yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see how long do we have to play? Ethan is wondering, um, each, I mean, in the program itself, uh, the players are generally going to meet with their coaches, um, about two hours a week. And then we have also a VOD review at the end of the week on Friday, which is another hour. Um, and then, you know, on Monday you have your lectures that come out as well, educational lectures. Um, but I'm sure your coaches will tell you to practice more outside of that as well. Um, so, yep, just keep that in mind. Uh, how important is it to stick to the basics, examples, aerials, blocking, and the like from Marshall? Well, I mean, you're going to use those throughout. If you're going pro, you're going to be using those all the time. So getting as consistent as you can with them and uh, knowing when the right time to do those things is really important uh, in just succeeding. Nice. Yeah, good Good point there. Um, Natasha's wondering how to be a good defensive player. I'm going to be honest. I don't, I, I dislike the idea of trying to just be one kind of player. Um, I think that, that it kind of, it kind of ruins your mentality, not necessarily like ruins your mentality, but changes your mentality to just say like, okay, I'm just going to only work on being, being defensive. Right. And then you won't really be able to develop your offense. And there's a lot of players that I've, that I've worked with and played with who have kind of, kind of been at that same level of kind of like, okay, I'm just going to be defensive and kind of be like, uh, we call it third man um, who's last back basically. Uh, and they, they have different roles obviously, but, but that third man at some point also has to be a first man. Right. It's it, Rocket league isn't a game where, one person stays in net, uh, two people don't. Uh, it's, it's completely a team sport and completely equal and should be equal um, for the workload for everyone. And that's what makes a pro team a pro team because they play off of their teammates and position in the perfect places. Yeah, good, good point there. And the sort of um, misconceptions and rolling and sort of how to rotate between the players, that's something that we plan on talking about more in the upcoming league. So again, stay tuned. Um, and yeah, you'll have a chance to work with great coaches like mm -hmm. Nitrous. Um, what's your favorite car? Wonders Ethan. Octane, obviously. Octane is just, I don't know. I, I'll play Octane or Fennec, either one uh octane i i am very 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 i don't know it just it's when it comes down to it it's really just it just depends on um it just depends on like how you feel with each car don't don't just because i just said that i like octane doesn't mean you should be using octane most of the pros use octane or fennec or or dominus or something but yeah and generally the differences are the hit boxes usually you got like three minutes huh you got like three minutes all right all right sorry yeah sorry. Go ahead. all good yeah we'll wrap up soon generally the um the hit boxes are the main differences between the cars uh yeah i the the hit box isn't really like a there it's not like a really big deal uh i don't i i don't know i i don't really notice it as much uh, the differences between the hitboxes. Um, but I mean, it could make a difference, I guess, um, for shooting and stuff, but I've always used octane a lot and that's just basically been default. Is that just a matter of personal preference then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's probably personal. Um, I think, I don't know. I haven't really gone too far into, um, into hitboxes and kind of like 
perfecting each of them. It's just kind of focused on the one. Okay. That I like. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, we're reaching the end here, but I do want to thank everyone for showing up today, um, for asking questions. Very much appreciate everyone coming out. I hope you enjoyed, learned something, um, and are excited for the upcoming league. Make sure that if you aren't registered to register, if you are registered, make sure to do your welcome survey um, and attend the kickoff webinar next Monday. Um, any closing thoughts from Alan or Nitrous? I thought it was great. Uh, Nitrous, um, you're awesome, dude. And this <laughs> is just going to be a really great year ahead. A lot of good questions, a lot of good energy. Richie, as always, wonderful job sort of being the master of ceremonies today. So awesome. thank you very thank much. You. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. I'm looking forward to teaching you guys more about Rocket League and expanding my career too. It's going to be a good place for me to do that. That's great. Well, Mm -hmm. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Um, and thanks again, everyone, for coming. Have a great Monday. Have a great week. Uh, we hope you join us for the other Meet the Pros, and we hope to see you in the upcoming league. So have a great one. Thank you, guys. Bye, everybody.